Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. It's another Saturday. We're together again here to encourage each other in Christ and fellowship with each other. And today I decided to do something special. But before, I wanted to ask you a question. What is it in your life that you want really badly? What is it that you want right now that is biblical, that is not against the Word of God? What is in your heart? What is the desire of your heart? Salvation, maybe, for your family members, for your loved ones? Healing for yourself or for your loved ones? Deliverance from the oppression of evil? From the hands of Satan? For yourself or for your loved ones again? Promotions at work? A new opportunity? A breakthrough in finances? Whatever it is. All that is in one thing and one thing only. This is your solution, the cup of the Lord. The Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let me read that scripture for you. It's one of the Psalms that you are all familiar with, but we are uh, most likely too familiar with it and we pass by it quite casually but I want you to focus on the words as I read from the scripture Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want whatever it is whatever it is that you really 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 want God is the supply of it and I'll tell you the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Not because you're a good person, not because you've done so many good things. No, because of his name's sake. Because of his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now listen to this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Your enemies, whoever they may be, or whatever they may be. The Lord prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You anoint my head with oil. That's the Holy Spirit. My cup runs over. My cup runs over from blessings of the Lord. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever you know it says he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake he restores my soul for his name's sake not because of anything else for his name's sake because you call on his name on his precious name that is why you know when you pick up the phone and call let's say uh, the manufacturer of your washing machine while your washing machine is still under the warranty and they come and do the service and fix it for you it's not because you're a special person it's because of their name they do it because of their name The Lord is doing it because of his name's sake. He prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemies. 
your cup runs over with goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life you know in the old days when they had sheep and the cattle of sheep were going and there were usually two boys in the back and one on the right one on the left guiding these cattle of sheep uh, towards their destination and that is what David is singing here goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life it's the resemblance of God's rod and staff your rod and staff they comfort me it doesn't hurt me when I feel the rod of the Lord on my back it doesn't hurt me the sheep doesn't feel hurt when you put that rod on this side or on that side and say no not this way not that way straight the sheep doesn't get hurt or feels comfortable that you are with him and we feel comfortable because the Lord is with us his rod and his staff comforts us now any trouble you have take it to the table the Lord has prepared the table for you before your enemies the same way Jesus on the last supper he had in the presence of his enemy he took the cup and he took the bread he gave thanks and he said do this in remembrance of me anytime and whenever you gather together and we want to do this in the presence of our enemy now our enemy your enemy might be the devil himself the governments the rulers the authorities could be your local government could be your boss could be your colleague could be uh, lack of money could be uh, depression could be oppression by the, de by the devil it could be anything the list goes on forever uh, we don't want to exhaust the list you get the gist take that trouble to the Lord on the table that he's prepared before you in the presence of your enemies I want you to prepare a drink now don't get me wrong this is not an alcoholic beverage this is a cordial uh, I'm totally uh, teetotal and so just so you know to set the records right and I've got a piece of crackers here I want you to get your bread and whatever it is as wine ready to have this communion while you're doing that I would like to read a very very important passage of scripture that we might have read it quite again casually we might not have dwelt on it uh, enough to know the depth and gravity of it I want you to um, listen to me as I read on from 1st uh, Corinthians 1st Corinthians uh, chapter 11 verses from 23 to the end uh, this is a, as I said very important passage of scripture and uh, Christians too often take it um, to say the least not serious uh, as, as serious as it can be you're, you're basically playing with death uh, when you're taking the cup of the Lord and the bread of communion you are literally playing with death so I would like to read this and I would like you to listen to this every verse of it and and think about what you're going to do this is Paul writing to the Corinthians 
1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 from verse 23 uh, to the end. For I received from the Lord while also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Very important. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. So you have to examine yourselves you have to examine yourselves then only then you can eat and drink for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves that is why that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep that means they're dead but if we were more discerning with regards to ourselves we would not come under such judgment if we were more discerning in regard to ourselves like how much sin we've done have we been cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ have we received the salvation by faith and received the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ or not or it's been just a lip service it has to be from your heart but if we were more discerning with regards to ourselves we would not come under this judgment nevertheless when we judge when we are judged in this way by the Lord we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world so then my brothers and sisters when you gather to eat you should all eat together anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together it might not result in judgment so you're not taking the cup of the Lord and the body of Christ the bread lightly you don't eat and drink of it because you're hungry or thirsty you have to understand by faith we are saved not by deeds the same way by faith we believe this is part of the blood of Christ by faith and that becomes part of you when you eat it becomes nutrition it, be it becomes flesh and blood in you same way with the drink drink of the cup the blood of Jesus Christ you believe it this is the blood of Jesus Christ no matter what it is it could be wine it could be vinegar it could be cordial it could be milk it could be water physically in the physical realm but whatever it is I know churches arguing over that too but we drink by faith if it was by the actual essence of wine then we would have to go find out exactly what wine did they drink and we would have to drink that wine and find out that bread and divide that exact 
spread literally to the whole world. It's impossible. Let's not digress to other subjects and focus on this. This becomes part of your blood and runs in the streams of your veins. By faith you believe that any ounce of that, any drop of that drink, any ounce of this bread becomes part of your body, part of your blood, and there are blood and body of Christ in you. So you become one with Christ. That's all by faith. All by faith. You believe and you take action in faith. So your veins will literally contain blood of Jesus and your body will literally contain body of Christ, part of the body of Christ in it. All that by faith. The same way you believe a broken bone can be healed and it gets healed literally, physically. Your belief, your faith brings the spiritual into the physical realm and it will show itself in the physical realm. Same as our confession of our sins and receiving salvation. We believe by faith that we are saved and that we're going to heaven. We believe that we've received the Holy Spirit and we do manifest the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So the spiritual will manifest itself in the physical realm. Let's do this. He broke the bread on the night he was betrayed and he gave thanks. That's all of us together eat the bread and body of Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sacrificing your son for our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our fathers. Wash us and cleanse us from any guilt, any sin. Let his body that was broken for us become part of our bodies. Thank you, Jesus. We remember you. In the same way, he took the cup and after he gave thanks, drank it. He said, do this whenever you get together in remembrance of me. Jesus, we remember you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son and his sacrifice for us. Let his blood become part of our blood in our bodies. Thank you, Jesus. We remember you. I'm sure your troubles will start shrinking away fleeing from you the depression anxiety all that is going to go away all that will manifest soon it is from the spiritual remember coming to the physical realm some of you might experience it immediately some of you might see it 
in a while. It might take a little bit of a time. It will happen. By faith, we are saved. And by faith, we walk. Thank you for joining us again. And I end this session with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, be with my audience, wherever they are, whatever troubles they're facing in the world. Let them be more than conquerors, as you promised. We claim all the promises in the Word of God, in the Bible that you've given us. And we claim victory over our troubles, our hurdles in life, our barriers, our uh, sicknesses and, and any kind of trouble, our enemy. Satan, I have great pleasure to say that you are under our feet because we are in Jesus and you were defeated more than 2,000 years ago. You're still defeated and you shall stay defeated. You can roar like a lion, but you're not a lion. We are in the lion of the tribe of Judah. And we are the true lions, true children of the true lion. Thank you, Lord, for your very best for your gift of salvation that you've granted us and we receive that by faith. Forgive us our sins, wash us, cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let every time we drink and eat, as we remember the Lord's sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, let his body become part of our body and let his blood run through our veins. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you again with another message. Until then, goodbye.